Welcome to NFI Hammer. I am a complete newbie to the world of tabletop gaming, miniature painting, and Warhammer 40,000. And if you're anything like me, you might be feeling a little overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information and the number of choices out there. When I first started exploring this hobby, I found heaps of helpful video and guides on YouTube. However, most of them are created by seasoned veterans who have been in the hobby for years, if not decades. While their expertise is invaluable, I often felt that some important aspects were overlooked or not given enough attention simply because they're second nature to those who have been doing this for so long. As a beginner, there are specific challenges and questions that come up, things that more experienced players might not even think to mention. For instance, understanding the basics of building and painting miniatures, navigating the different game options, and figuring out where to even start without feeling overwhelmed. In this video, I'm going to compare Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer Underworlds from the perspective of a fellow beginner. I'll cover the aspects that I found particularly confusing or important when I was starting out. Whether it's the complexity of the rules, the costs of getting started, or the types of community support available, I want to give you a clear and relatable overview to help you make an informed decision on which game might be right for you. So if you're new to this hobby and looking for some guidance from someone who is also starting out, you're in the right place. Let's dive in and explore the exciting world of 40k and Underworlds together. So when you're tossing up between Warhammer 40k and Underworlds, it's important to consider the target audience and the complexity of each game. If we dive a little bit deeper into what kind of player each game is best suited for and how complex the rules and gameplay can be for a beginner. Now again, this is just a guide, it's not really like, oh this is easier for beginners, so beginners should definitely pick that up. Depending on your unique goals and what you hope to achieve, maybe 40k is better suited for you. So Warhammer 40k is known for its expansive universe and intricate gameplay, so it makes it a great fit for players who enjoy deep strategic games with a lot of individual moving parts. The game is designed for those who love epic, large-scale battles and the rich lore that accompanies the 40k universe. I really got into 40k via the lore and setting, and that's what actually got me into miniature painting. So for me, I started off with 40k. You know, if you enjoy spending time planning your army composition, strategizing your moves, and immerse, immersing yourself in a detailed setting, 40k might be the game for you. However, 40k does come with a very steep learning curve. The rules are comprehensive and can be com complex, especially for beginners who have never played a tabletop game like myself. Learning the core rules and understanding the various unit types, as well as mastering the numerous special abilities can be really daunting at first. But don't worry, the community and the wealth of online resources can help you navigate this complexity. Many players find that the depth and challenge of 40k are part of its appeal, offering endless opportunities for growth and mastery. On the other hand, Warhammer Underworlds is designed to be more accessible and fast-paced, making it an excellent choice for beginners who are looking for a quick, tactical game. Just because it's more accessible doesn't necessarily mean, though, that it's super easy to pick up for beginners, and I think that's often really misunderstood. The game is set in a different universe, the Age of Sigma universe, and focuses on small-scale skirmishes between warbands. This makes it less overwhelming in terms of the number of miniatures and the complexity of the rules, just because the scale of the game is quite small. Underworlds combines miniature combat, but as well as a deck building element, which adds a layer of strategy without being overcomplicated. So if you like things like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, and you want to try and, you know, get into miniature battling, then this is actually a good kind of hybrid approach. 
The game's mechanics are straightforward, air quotes, <laughs> and each match is relatively short, you know, somewhere between 30 to 60 minutes. So this is a great option who might not have the time, you know, or the <laughs> patience for a larger, more involved battles of 40k. Because of its accessibility and quicker gameplay, it's kind of meant for people who are new to the tabletop gaming. Um, and it's also, you know, it's people that maybe have more time poor and have shorter amount of time to dedicate towards it. And it's kind of a great way into bringing other people into miniature gaming and Warhammer because they basically can rock up in play straight away without having to spend months building an army. If you're only interested in miniature painting, then just pick whichever models you like to paint. Uh, this video is really more about playing the game, but I will just say that, uh, you know, a warband of Underworlds models, you know, are kind of cheap. You get five different models for around, you know, 50, Australian dollary dues, and each model is kind of unique and different. Whereas with Warhammer um, 40k, you can spend, you know, the same amount of money, and you might just get a single model to paint, or you might get ten very similar models, like you know Necron warriors or something like that. So just something to consider. But really, there's no wrong option. Just paint whatever you like. A quick basic overview, Warhammer 40,000, commonly known as 40k, is a tabletop miniature war game set in a dystopian science slash fantasy universe. The game is known for its large scale battles where players command armies composed of multiple units, including infantry, vehicles, monsters and aircraft. Each player assembles and paints their own army of miniatures, which represents different factions in the 40k universe. Battles are fought using a complex set of rules that govern movement, shooting, close combat, and, and morale or leadership. The game's scale and depth makes it a favourite amongst hobbyists who enjoy very deep strategic gameplay and the creative process of building and painting detailed models for their armies. Now, comparing that to Underworlds, unlike 40k, Underworlds is a fast-paced tactical arena combat game. It's set in the Age of Sigma universe, which is more fantasy, and focuses on small-scale skirmishes between different warbands. Each warband consists of a handful of finely detailed miniatures, and the game is played on a hex-based board which adds a strategic element to positioning and movement. Underworlds also combines an element of deck building with miniature combat, as players construct decks of cards that represent their warband's abilities, as well as the objectives and tactics. This mix of miniature and cards makes for highly dynamic and replayable experience. Underworlds is designed to be more accessible and faster to play than 40k, making an excellent choice for those new to the hobby. However, it's not a guarantee that it's going to be the right fit for you, and this video hopefully will explain the pros and cons of this. When starting any new hobby, understanding the costs involved is crucial, especially during these harsh economic times. So let's break down the costs associated with getting started into 40k and getting started into Underworlds to help decide which game fits your budget best. Now I'm not going to go into using 3D printed models or proxies and stuff like that and that's a whole nother video. So I'm just going to be talking about official game workshop models. So with 40k the initial investment can be quite significant. The first thing you'll need is the core rulebook, which provides all the basic rules and laws you need to start playing. You can download this online, uh, but you'll also need a codex for your army, uh, which sort of contains all the rules for all the units in that army, the stats, as well as a little bit of background information. You can use websites like New Recruit um, to get access to this for free as well. But then there's the cost of the miniatures, and this is what I really want to focus on. 
So 40k armies are quite large. Playing a small 1000 point game, which is what I play, you can check out some of my beginner videos here, um, they will still require something like 10 units and each unit can have 5 to 10, sometimes 20 models in it. So it's a considerable number of models. You can buy starter sets such as the Recruit or uh, Elite Edition. I got Leviathan box, which is amazing value. And that comes with two sets of armies, the rule books and some other stuff like the mission rules. Um, so there are definitely accessible box sets that you can get. But if you're buying sort of individual units, um, it can really add up quite quickly. There's also combat patrols that come with a predetermined um, army that you can battle against other people's combat patrols, which is good for beginners. But still, we're kind of talking about, you know, a lot of cost. On top of that, you'll need tools for assembling and painting your miniatures. This is common for both. Uh, the miniatures in Underworlds do not require glue and you don't generally require a carrying case for your models whereas in 40k most models do require glue and transporting them can be a bit of a nightmare i haven't yet cracked that one but if you've got any tips let me know in the comments so looking at underworlds the getting started cost is a lot lower the core set such as the underworlds wintermore which is what i've got is the latest season set and it costs, you know, somewhere to 60 to 80 US dollars. And this requires everything you need to play. It's got two war bands, two boards, dice, tokens, cards and rules, as well as two other sets of cards, which we'll get into later. And if you want to buy a new army in Underworld, that's just buying a new war band. And that costs somewhere between 30 to 40 US dollars. And it comes with its own set of cards and allowing you new strategies and play styles. Because Underworlds focuses on small scale skirmishes, you don't need to buy as many miniatures. So it kind of keeps the ongoing costs quite low. As I said before, you'll still need to paint your miniatures and assemble them. But because the model number is smaller, you know, over time you won't be painting as much and needing to buy as much paint and stuff like that. But there is that deck building component. So if you really want to have like meta decks, you know, you might want to buy latest deck sets, um, rival decks and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, there is still an additional kind of cost if you're really trying to have the most meta latest thing. Uh, but it still pales in comparison to the cost of 40k. So 40k requires a larger initial investment and can become quite costly as you expand your army and collection. So it's important to budget for the costs of new models, codexes and hobby supplies. Whereas Underworlds is a much more affordable entry point and as well as a lower ongoing cost. So it makes it a much more budget friendly option for those new to the hobby. And quickly, one other thing that I think uh, experienced content creators skip over is that 40K requires a boatload of terrain, you know, and the more terrain you have, better the games are because the some units are just completely overpowered without terrain. And if you're buying official Games Workshop terrain, you're looking at, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to get a full set. There's obviously other brands of terrain that are much cheaper, as well as you can play with cardboard boxes and tissue boxes and toilet rolls. So there's a lot of free options. Um, but if you want it to be like that Games Workshop quality, you're looking at a lot of money. Underworlds has no terrain. You can do terrain for some of the individual hexes, but it's purely a cosmetic thing. It's not required to play. So I think that's a really important um, aspect when you're looking at cost. One of the most important aspects of getting into a new hobby is the community and the support available to help you play. So let's take a quick look at what you can expect from the communities and support systems for 40k and Underworlds. 
you know, and just quickly, I'd like to say that if one of your friends is playing one of these or they're playing Age of Sigma or whatever, and you want to play with them, then there's really not really much of a question to ask, you know, if just get the same set as your friends. But if you're in a situation where you're the first one of your friends getting into tabletop and miniature gaming, then this is where this video will hopefully make you come to a good decision. So starting with 40k, the community is very large and well established. There's decades of history, and it's one of the most active gaming communities in the world. In any local gaming store or clubs where you can meet other players, there'll be plenty of people to join campaigns, participate in tournaments, and just have friendly matches. Online, the Warhammer community is very large. There's countless forums and subreddits where you can ask questions, share your builds, get advice on tactics, painting techniques. And obviously YouTube, where you are right now, there's heaps of awesome content creators like Tabletop Tactics, uh, which offer tutorials, battle reports, and hobby tips. And Games Workshop provides quite good support. The community website is based with articles, news, and updates, you know, and everything's documented and there's plenty of resources. Now, Underworlds is not the same. It doesn't have a long history and the online community is quite small, but they're very passionate and growing rapidly. You know, the game appeals to players who enjoy quicker tactical experiences and deck building. So local gaming stores do sometimes host underworld nights and tournaments, uh, providing a great opportunity to meet other players and improve your skills. Uh, because the games are a lot shorter, they're a lot easier to participate in. And the community is very welcoming to newcomers. I think sometimes with 40k, people are very gatekeepy and, you know, very particular about it. I mean, overall, the community is wonderful, but there are sometimes, you know, bad apples in the bunch. Whereas I feel like with Underworlds, because the game is a little bit more casual, it doesn't attract those types as often. And online for Underworlds, there's Facebook groups and community pages like that. They've also got uh, Reddits, um, as well as a couple of YouTube channels uh, tailored towards Underworlds. But again, it's a lot smaller than 40K. And Game Workshop uh, is supporting um, Underworlds again with updates and stuff like that. There's always rumors that these new game systems are going to be abandoned. And while that's always a risk, you know, if people are playing it and enjoying it, then the numbers will hopefully keep Games Workshop interested in it. But if that is something that you're worried about, you know, because you don't want to invest a lot of time and money on painting something, only for it to be discontinued, you know, maybe 40k because that's not going away anytime soon is a safer long-term bet. So in summary, they kind of both offer strong communities that are eager to help new players. Uh, it's just really whether you prefer the large scale battles and extensive lore of 40k or sort of fast paced tactical gameplay of Underworlds. Either way, you'll find a welcoming community and a wealth of resources to support you on your journey. So let's dive into the gameplay experience of 40k and Underworlds to help you understand what playing each game is like. And I think this is a really important aspect for beginners because if you're like me, you've never played anything. So you have no idea what to kind of expect and what the differences are. So if we start with 40k, it offers a grand immersive experience that revolves around epic battles. Each game lasts between two to four hours, but for my personal experience, when I've been playing a thousand points of Necron versus Aldari, uh, they're more on the four hour plus side. I think maybe for more experienced people, they can do it a lot quicker, but for beginners, it's always gonna take you longer than you expect. And basically, it's alternating turns. So I would move all my units, shoot all my units at any enemies they can shoot at. They would have charging into close combat, and then each 
unit would then fight the unit next to them and then that's the end of my turn and then the opponent then would do the same again so those you know turns can take quite a lot of time where the opponent is just kind of sitting there doing nothing <laughs> there are some stratagems and abilities to react to things but generally speaking it's kind of you know alternating um, turns and those turns can be 15 20 minutes or longer and the game is played on a large surface area so i play on top of a half a ping pong table if that gives you any um, idea of the scale and you also need to then fill that area with terrain because terrain is super important in 40k because it impacts movement and line of sight and so this does add a layer of technical and techni uh, tactical depth as players maneuver their units to gain advantage. The rules encompass a wide range of actions from, you know, shooting and ability and vehicle combat, as well as like morale and leadership checks and strategic objectives. And there's a lot of different phases. And one of the standout features of 40k is the variety of units and factions. So every faction has its own set of abilities, strengths and weaknesses and set of units. And so it really does provide endless variety and replayability. The complexity of the rules and the depth of strategy mean that no two games will ever be quite the same. However, this can also make the game more challenging for beginners as there is so much to learn and heaps to remember. Overall, the gameplay experience in 40k is very deep and engaging and rewarding, but for only those that enjoy large scale, long strategy games with a high level of detail and customization. Underworlds, on the other hand, offers a much faster streamlined gameplay experience. Games usually last 30 to 60 minutes, making it easy to fit into a busy schedule or play multiple games in one session. The game is played on a hex-based board, so it simplifies movement compared to 40k. You don't need to get your tape measure out and start trying to use bits of string to <laughs> determine how far units can move. The gameplay in Underworlds is tactical, but focusing on small skirmishes between warbands. Each warband consists of a few models, typically like three to six, and players alternate activating their fighters, playing power cards and scoring objectives. So what this means is I I would move one unit and then we could play power cards to you know help alter the game and then you would move a unit and then we would play power cards and then I would move a unit and play power cards so it's going back and forward in a much quicker succession than 40k. The streamlined rules and shorter game times makes it very accessible for players who have never played tabletop before but still offers quite a lot of depth and tactical decisions that keep people engaged. It still isn't very simple. There are a lot of rules around keywords and abilities and stuff like that. So don't think that Underworlds is, you know, for young people that have no idea <laughs> about anything. There's still a lot of complexity in it. And I think it gets dismissed as like too simple. And I don't think that's a fair assessment. I think one of the most you know interesting differences is around what I call like the pre-game strategy. So both 40k and Underworlds has a customization and strategic planning involved before you even start playing. In 40k this comes from list building, whereas in Underworlds it's about deck building. So let's compare these two processes. In 40k, list building is a critical part of your strategy. Your army list determines what units you'll bring to the battlefield, what uh, equipment they'll have, what stratagems you can use, and any sort of special abilities. Creating a balanced and effective list requires a deep understanding of your faction's strengths and weaknesses, as well as how different units synergize with each other. 
When you're building your list, you start with a point limit agreed with your opponent, which can range from small skirmish kind of combat patrol size of 500 to scales of 2000. And if you're totally, you know, experienced, you know what you're doing, 4000. But that blows my mind even thinking about it. Each unit um, your army has affects the point cost. So you kind of have to carefully choose how to allocate these points to create a well-rounded force. You need to consider factors such as unit roles, so balancing battle line, troops, elites, heavy supports, and fast attack, uh, synergies, so how units work together, including buffs and special objectives, abilities. So for Necrons that I play, their leaders, and when they attach to a unit can really change how they play and make them more resilient. Then there's also objectives, so you kind of want to make sure you've got units that can score objectives because that's how you win the game. And then there's also the meta, so which units are considered really good for their cost and which units are considered bad. And, you know, if you're struggling to win, you might want to, you know, pick up some more meta units. Or if you're versing someone whose army is very, you know, competitive, you might get completely steamrolled and destroyed. So the complexity of list building in 40k means there's a lot of room for creativity and personal preference, but it can be really challenging for beginners to master. When you compare this to Underworlds, they focus more on the deck building as part of its strategy. And each deck has two sets of cards, power deck and objective deck. So the power deck contains cards that provides upgrades to your warband, um, gambits and ploys to alter sort of the performance and what you're doing during the game. And the objective deck consists of cards that outline how you can actually score points, which are crucial for winning the game. This is different from 40k where both players have the same primary objective and they both have the same set of secondary objectives to draw from. In Underworlds, each um, warband can score points completely differently. So there's more uniqueness and variety in that aspect. So when you're building your card deck, um, there's different styles. So there's basically just you buy a deck and you use the deck exactly as it is. And so that doesn't require any customization at all. And it's really beginner friendly because you don't need to understand all the nuances. Then there's a format where you can combine two decks together. And because you can only pick cards from two decks, it does limit the complexity, um, but it does allow you to kind of customize what kind of strategies you like. If you prefer to have more, you know, aggressive play style, then you can, you know, pick cards from those two decks that are more aggressive. If you prefer more control play style, then you can pick those control cards. And then there's one format, I think it's called the legacy format. Um, and basically that's where you can pick cards from any deck. And that's very overwhelming for beginners. And I think, you know, to avoid that <laughs> completely as a beginner, because you're just going to be completely steamrolled by players that have access to a huge number of different decks. So I think that the deck building aspect of Underworlds is more accessible for beginners because of the different types of um, games that you can play and because they limit the number of cards and the complexity of choices uh, it's much more manageable compared to building a full army list in 40k however it still offers a rich layer of strategy and customization that can be very rewarding as you refine your deck and learn the nuances of your warband so in summary you know list building in 40k creates a comprehensive army list with detailed unit choices and synergies, which can be complex, but does allow for a high degree of customization and strategic depth. Deck building in Warhammer Underworlds, while simpler, still provides a strategic challenge with its focus on creating synergistic power and objective decks tailored to your warband strength. 
apologies if this video is a little bit chaotic. I was trying something a little bit different, but it kind of ended up being like a university lecture. So let me know in the comments below what you found worked well or didn't work well in the video. But just recapping really quickly, you know, firstly I'd recommend playing whatever your friends are playing. You know, if that's Underworlds or something completely different, go play that. If you're just interested in painting models, then just paint whatever interests you. If you are looking at playing a competitive game and you are time poor or just money poor, consider Underworlds as like a cheaper alternative. However, you know, if the law or the complexity of 40k interests you and you know maybe you're worried that underworlds might not be supported in like three or five years time then yeah definitely consider 40k but ultimately my advice is just get started like just pick something this hobby is amazing the community is really friendly and super welcoming and there really isn't a right or a wrong choice just pick whatever looks fun for you anyway until next time see you later bye